things that I found intriguing is that a pear is very similar to the shape of a prostate. So I went to the local supermarket and I grabbed some pears. Uh, this one's a little funny, it's a little too round, so I don't think that'll be good for our example today. This one looks pretty perfect to me. This one's a little bruised. Alright, so here we have a pear. And what I, I'm going to demonstrate today, from everything I've learned from doing over 1,500 transperineal prostate biopsies with a freehand approach and also using the precision point transperineal access system. We're going to try to embody everything we've learned from all the biopsies, all the results, and what we've also learned from MRI imaging and also whole mount sectioning of the prostate. So here we have the pair, but first we'll go ahead and put some gloves on. And just to orient our anatomy, we have the bladder would be here. So here's the base of the prostate, here's the apex, and as we notice, the anterior prostate has a gentle slope to it. Now, often the prostate posterior will be flat, but oftentimes it has a slight teardrop shape. So I think this pair is actually quite perfect. So what we'll do is first we'll cut the pair in half. And let's go with this half of the pair because it almost has a natural urethra in it. So let's set that aside. And I'll outline right here with the Sharpie marker the, uh, the urethra. So we have, the pair has this nice natural urethra, so we'll draw through that. And then we have the, um, the transitional zone, which comes through like this. And then the transitional zone abuts the anterior capsule, particularly at the anterior base. Then we have the central zone at the midline, which comes down like this. So we have transitional zone, central zone. Then we have the peripheral zone, which often sweeps up along the apex. Some prostates will have a transitional zone that comes all the way toward the anterior apical region, and sometimes the peripheral zone will sweep up even further. But for the sake of this video, we'll go ahead and assume that there is some PZ that wraps all the way up anterior. Now, one of the things that we've learned uh, from numerous biopsies and MRI images is that the transitional zone does not harbor much cancer. It does harbor some cancer. So for the sake of where we're going to take biopsies and where we don't need to stick the needle, we'll go ahead and perform a simple prostatectomy and remove the peripheral zone or the transitional zone. Okay. So there it is. Now one one thing we've learned about the transitional zone is that the, the, the posterior transitional zone almost never has cancer, and if it has cancer, it eroded from the peripheral zone into the transitional zone posterior. So everything in the posterior TZ, we can assume, is a no-need-to-go zone. So we could split from the urethra posterior of the transitional zone, we could split that out like this. Now, we do know that the, the anterior prostate will have the anterior fibromuscular um, peripheral zone and transitional zone that may harbor cancer in this region. But we also recognize that the, the basal half of the transitional zone almost never harbors cancer. So from here to the base, no need to go there with a biopsy. So we can remove that. We also know that the central zone could harbor cancer not often and not often enough to stick a needle in on a routine basis. So we can also remove the central zone. But we do know that the peripheral zone wraps around the base of the prostate at the lateral aspect. So we can go ahead and cut out this portion of the central zone. There we go. So we'll put our anterior apical half of the transitional zone back in the equation. We've removed the CZ zone. Here's all the PZ zone. So what we've come up with is how do we stick, how many needles do we have to stick into this prostate 
so that if I was hiding a six millimeter lesion anywhere within the prostate, I can hit it with a strategic sampling of the prostate. This is not random prostate biopsies. This is freehand transperineal. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate uh, the first sector, which is the, um, the posterior medial aspect of the prostate. So roughly under the urethra and then coming about five and five millimeter increments lateral. So our first biopsy will simply go right under the urethra. And what we're doing here is we're trying to split the difference between the pseudo capsule of the TZ and the posterior capsule of the prostate. So if you look under here, that's my trajectory for core number one, posterior medial. And based on the 22 millimeter throw of your average biopsy needle, this sample can bring you all the way back to here. So most people will say if, if the prostate's greater than about 30 millimeters, you'd have to take at the midline an apical biopsy and then a basal specimen. Well, what we found is that the second biopsy at the basal midline is not needed because that's central zone. So really one biopsy often will cover the first biopsy, sector one, which is the um, posterior medial. Then we ratchet about five millimeters along that zone for biopsy number two, just like that. And if the, if the, if an MRI has a lesion within sector one, you can go ahead and take a few additional samples if needed, but for routine sampling for average size prostates, two cores in the posterior medial sector will do the job. You can see that um, in order to sometimes sample ideally, you need to introduce a slight bias to your biopsy trajectory. So here we've anchored at the apical um, region of the PZ at the midline and angled slightly downward. And I'll show you with the precision point device how we can achieve that. Sector two is posterior lateral. So again, we're going to be riding in the peripheral zone. We'll then ratchet um, a little more lateral and then angle to contour because the prostate's not a box, it's a cone. So ideally, we don't want to come in like a grid would do where you'd either choose this or this, but rather if we anchor at the posterior lateral apex, anchor here and then introduce a slight bias angling along the peripheral zone without entering the, uh, the TZ. So if you look on the inside, we're going to be, we don't want to enter into the TZ, but rather ride just lateral to the pseudocapsule. Then our fourth sample will be a little bit lateral to this, riding up the anterior horn, staying close to the, um, the lateral posterior capsule. That would be number two in the posterior lateral segment. Okay, now one of the issues that comes up, and you can almost see through the pair, but the problem with longer prostates is that the only area we may miss with this type of sampling is at the basal PZ. So you imagine your seminal vesicle coming off right about here. So I do recommend taking two cores, one very posterior lateral base, which would be here, and then the second one, just a little posterior medial to that without, without entering the TZ or the CZ zone. So one, the second one would be right here. Now if the prostate is rather short, then usually your posterior lateral cords may reach that region. But I do recommend uh, establishing two distinct cores in that region. Now of course the biopsy is going to come in from the apex to the base, and I'll show that in a moment. So we have two cores at the base, that would be sector three. So sector one, posterior medial, sector two, posterior lateral, sector three, base or the corner pocket. Now as we move anterior, and this is the real benefit of transperineal biopsy, is that we can adequately sample the anterior half of the prostate. So for here, we'll start anterior medial, and we want to include tissue that may be peripheral zone sweeping up, part anterior fibromuscular and part anterior transitional zone. So we introduce not necessarily straight like this, but more at a slight bias. So we'll come in 
anchor into the apex, a slight deviation, and drive it right into the anterior TZ. That would be the first core of the anterior medial sector. Second core would be about five millimeters lateral, and that will also, now as we come out lateral in the anterior zone, we'll shift from a slight angle to a more of a straight parallel to the, um, to the floor, um, so five millimeters lateral to that. We'll also incorporate some TZ. And then finally we have the anterior lateral, which is really continuing up the anterior horn and then finishing about halfway between the final core of the anterior medial and the tip of the anterior horn. So we have one right here. And then finally, one in between the two, right over there. So we have five sectors, approximately two cores per sector for a total of 10 biopsies, which should map the entire prostate without missing the potential of a 6 mil lesion within each. Now, as we use the precision point device, as we're in sector 1, we're, we're, going, to, um, we're going to be pretty much parallel uh, to um, the um, the posterior capsule and as we enter our biopsy core we'll anchor in and then introduce a tilt and then biopsy and then to go for the second sample in the posterior medial sector we'll simply laterally shift our probe in the perineal scruff lateral and then do the same then as we move to sector two posterior lateral since it's a conical shape and not a box we'll actually still laterally shift the probe in the scruff anchor into the apical region, then deviate the probe toward the ipsilateral shoulder to ride the contour of the prostate, and then as we, as we move lateral and anterior into the horn, we can simply accentuate that motion and then also pull up and slightly angle uh, the device to take those samples. For the base now, if the prostate is long enough, what we'll do is actually introduce, and I'm going to cut the pair here to show this. So I'm cutting out the, um, the anterior medial sector. So you can see the, the posterior lateral trajectories. So we want to cover the entire PZ here. So by doing that, you'll have the same position we had in sector two, which is a lateral shift and an angulation toward the ipsilateral shoulder. And as we will just introduce the biopsy needle, you know, halfway into the, uh, the PZ and then fire so that you can include that basal segment. Now anterior medial is a very different kind of hand motion. So what we'll want to do with this is we'll often relax on the, the pro, pulling it outward and angling toward uh, the ceiling slightly so that, and then also deforming the prostate, which we're able to do with uh, the freehand method by compressing the prostate, even moving the aperture on the precision point, and then taking the anterior medial samples. And then again, as we move anterior lateral, uh, because the prostate height reduces, we can then flatten out our probe and a slight angulation toward the ipsilateral shoulder for our two anterior lateral cores. And then you repeat on the contralateral side. And there you will then include and should find all cancer within the prostate.